the art of life. I am Willow Chang Alion, your hostess, hopefully with the mostest. And as promised, ladies and gentlemen, we are having our Jeff three-peat. That's right. I repeat, Jeff Gear is in the house because we know you can't get enough of him and neither can we. And sometimes on a short notice, it's wonderful because he's my Terry Gar. I can call him up, and provided that he's able and willing, he is there, and he always delivers. So, Jeff Gear, thank you for joining us. If you should end up watching this in, say, the middle of April or August, <laughs> we are broadcasting live as of October 25th, and this is our favorite season, the witching hour. This is why we have Jack in the house, and, and Jeff in the house, and this smiling guy. So, death to the green screen, long live the images. <laughs> We're always trying to improve the show here at Think Tech Hawaii. So, it is our favorite season, and it is also your birthday. Yes. How wondrous is that? So what we're going to do is, we're just going to talk story. I heard that you're pretty good at that. And uh, we're just going to take a little saunter down memory lane, and we're going to share some fabulous thoughts and ideas about Halloween. So, Halloween, the crack in the egg, the space between, when the world that was and the world that will be come together almost and as the celtic calendar lets us know there are times when what was the spirit world tumbles into the world of hard tack reality and infuses it with spirit what he said and when those spirits come a knocking on your door you better give them a candy better have a treat better treat them nice because if you don't Tricks. And the old stories mean that those tricks are not fun, not happy, not little uh, smurfs. They're not Elliot Spitzer tricks, ladies and gentlemen. You're losing limbs. Your uh, family is gone. You're in a different world. Flesh eating bacteria. Alawai Canal. That's pretty bad. Or you could just use one of those wipes and flush it down your toilet and cause misery for all of your community. I've been reading about it. It all goes this. somewhere. Did I go there? I went there. <laughs> you People, did. Don't throw those wipes down. Oh. The plumbing was never intended for that. So, tricks or treats? Well, I think we just covered both categories there. I'm going to take it back to treats. If you were to give us, in no particular order, your top three treats, because I heard that three is God's number. What are the three treats that would make your heart and your stomach just pitter-patter with joy when you open up the sack of the loot? And this is what we did at the Chang household. Check it out. What? My brother and I would go stealthily visit every freaking house on our street. <laughs> and you know what? We lived on a hill that had many driveways, if you're familiar with Manoa Valley. So that's a lot of cardio yeah. going up and down and Some real you know, hills there. ringing on a lot of bells. Mm. And you end up waiting as a long line. And they're like, we're not open for business. Well, there's also there's a lot of wonderful senior citizens. So you ring oh, the bell and goodness. there's like this lay. And you're thinking, <laughs> right. is anyone going to come to shuffle, the door? Shuffle. So they're just, they're just getting, they're just getting to the door. Right. right. Slow reaction time. Exactly. We'd yep. go home with the loot. We'd spread it out all over the carpet. That's right. Being the anal person I am, I would put them into little categories. Of course. Like, here's a clump of butterfingers, and here are the jujubes. Favorites. Here's some sixlets. Not so good tradeaways. Exactly. And then we'd start the barter, ye old barter. Uh, so the question for you is: top three, five, if you feel so inclined. Top three candies. <sighs> Things that you would just never trade, but you might trade for. Actually, uh, iPod would be a nice one. Oh. Uh, I wouldn't mind the little earphones as well that go in there. A ticket to Thailand, because that's where I'm going to do storytelling uh, uh, next. Excuse me, Mustafa, I think we were talking candy. Well, it's been so long since I really, you know, like went wild over candy. I think it was like in Italy in 1902. You know, that kind of thing is <laughs> it's like... It's the old country. That's where a candy is a religion. <laughs> you know, next to the Pope is a chocolate. <laughs> That's about to eat. A gelati. But Italy, other than you that, know. you know, well, you know. Mm -hmm. I think we're just like... It's for people who can't get out of their chair. <laughs> <laughs> we don't mean to insult anybody, but we will do our best to share the wealth. 
<laughs> my stacks include, you know, DVDs. Uh, actually, I had like an LDS light, not later Latter Day Saints. I but thought you were going to say L an LL Cool J. <laughs> oh, no, no. <laughs> I, I just had great lighting at the Talk Story Festival. Those new lights. You like this? Oh my God, I'm they're kind of so good. To them. I love them. I'm old school with the gel. No, the gels is like here's a red gel and it <laughs> makes everything red. These ones have like like um, the optic uh, eyes of insects. There's like 300 bulbs in there and each of them has three or four sensors so you like have a joystick and you go bluish green with a purple tinge and like with a twist of lemon and a half cup of decaf. Spectacular and like oh here's a light then you put those in and they're like whoa lights the whole thing from like across the room. It's like whoa that's light. I want one of those for and my living room. You know what they say? They say Boys and their toys. All the, no, if, if all the world is a stage, then I just want better lighting. <laughs> right. Or a little bit of fun hair. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, I can By the way, would you just turn your head a little bit so we can all... Everyone at the home, please go, ooh, that's where you will. Ooh. It is a learning curve, ladies and gentlemen. I looked at that footage and I said, my God, she what's needs with a little. that hair and makeup? I felt like a drag queen when I left the house, <laughs> but on TV it doesn't read like it. So... I gave a little extra dry queen, and I love me some dry queen. So this is a shout out for you girls and boys out there. But back to candy. Seriously, tell yes. us about the candy of 1902. <sighs> Six lits. Do you like them? Amidst skeletons, uh, days of dead, uh, embalming, uh, possession, stones that live, uh, bodies coming back to life, the speaking of spirits and ghouls. Candy in a bag is like a long way from what I really think about with Halloween. From a reformed sugar addict, this is nothing <laughs> short of sacrilege. Well then, I'm gonna bust it out. Let me tell you please. something. Please. Gee, uh, Will, could you give us please maybe three or five of your favorite chocolates? I thought you would never ask. In no particular order, I'm a fan of the Tootsie Roll. It looks terrible, but it tastes great. <laughs> it's a great American candy. It's brown. It's chewy. Mm. It's sweet. It has no nutritional value whatsoever. But if you have a dry mouth, that dry mouth be gone. Now, I have learned recently of this new to me. I'm mm. not going to say that it's new because I'll get 10 emails from somebody and they'll say, you need to do your research because in 1978, it was new to me, friends. They have flavor Tootsie Rolls other than the Tootsie Roll flavor. Oh. I know. They have lemon lime. They have vanilla. The whole vanilla one just scared me. I haven't touched it. They're still sitting in their protective wrappers at home because I got the half pound bag of assorted Tootsie Rolls. I'm taking notes here, Willow. Orangey, you know, mm -hmm. also orange. Orange was okay, but you just can't. Why mess with success? You know, it's like when I used to drink Coke before I was 15, that was a long time ago, and they brought out new Coke. Do you remember that? Uh, I remember it came and went. It did. Right. No so one wanted anything new. I saw these flavored Tootsie Rolls and I thought, hasn't anybody learned anything about New Coke? Why did they do this? <laughs> like, like Dr. Pepper. They had cherry Dr. Pepper. What's the purpose of that? Exactly. I love me some Sixlets. I think I've said it about two or three times. They're pretty delightful. Um, what else is good? The ones that kind of scare me, I, those are just as memorable. Bit O' Honey. Right, a little snappy. Um, I was always, Too I much was in your never teeth. a fan of people who give the little sun-made raisins. It's like oh, right. oh, we're gonna. If we're gonna go candy, let's go candy. We're gonna give healthy things. <laughs> right. We're gonna give you these raisins. And you couldn't trade raisins for anything. I mean, you might be willing to throw it at somebody's head, or you you give it to them as an insult when you're six or seven. Homie, you don't want no raisins. <laughs> and I know that those mom and dads and those grandmothers mean really well. But if you want to give an alternative thing, you know what made us excited? What? Money. <laughs> there was one house in our block that always gave us pennies. I know in today's day <laughs> and <laughs> Burn it. Hey, Andy, come out down I the walked copper. up here for <laughs> took 30 minutes for the old geezer to get to the door. But you know, you might want to give those commemorative coins that have the states, you know? I think we're still looking for Connecticut, my husband and I, so hey, I'm just I'm just trying to give the people out there some alternatives. It's that culture and life thing. You know, Mindy Jaffe, we love you, she gave toothbrushes. 
Now there is a comment that, on the sugar rush. That is. Mm. So, okay. You're not, when you're I was not... a parent, our kids would come back with these big bags, and just like you, they'd pour them out on the living room, sort them out, and then swap them, and get all excited, and then they'd still a parent. go to bed. Because your kids are big. Kids are big. They've got, sorry, they have kids. <laughs> We used to like then go, oh no, you don't get this. We'd cut them in half. Do you remember like in the 70s, sure. the whole scare, like, beware of right. candy because there's a razor blade? Right. Go for the real synthetic food. That was totally bogus, people. Right. We didn't have Snopes. We just had to believe what they said on TV That's because right. it was like a parent that put the razor blade inside their own kid's candy they and then they create and this sent scare. It to, yeah, oh, I had no Shame idea. Shame on whoever you are. Nothing like a wrong, like then, a good apple. Do you remember this? I told you we're going down memory lane. Right after 9/11, they wanted to not have Halloween. It's true, and this is when they started a lot of the Sacrilege. Halloween trick or treating at the uh, shopping center <laughs> because they thought that this was a safer alternative. Oh, yes, of course. Because there are no terrorists in shopping centers ever. Ever. No. There's just the people who case you because they think you're shoplifting. Yeah. Or the ones who ignore you because they think you're not going to buy anything. Yeah. Or the ones who forget to take the tag off your clothes and when you walk out the door it goes meep, 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 and you feel like a total and doofus. Right, everyone's eyes go. And you're like, it wasn't me. <laughs> right. I paid for the t-shirt. Right. Oh, it's Willow Chang again. Oops. Oops. Yeah. But she looks great. She always has the, the vintage outfits. I Only went, if they are scent free. That's the thing you must know about vintage. When we have Darlene on the show, we're going to talk about that. The nose never lies. <laughs> and if it smells like a chain smoker, you probably don't want to buy it. Sorry. Okay, we know that you, how your, your feelings are on candy. Memory Lane, your first Halloween costume that you actually remember. I the one remember. that you chose, not the one that mom and dad put you in. Because everyone at some point has the costume that their parents put them in. I do not have children yet, but I have already decided ages ago what those costumes <laughs> will be. And for the first five years of my unborn child, when they arrive, they will it's be all munchkins. <laughs> I see. Munchkins. The lollipop kill. The lolly. Yes. Mm. They have no choice in the matter. When they reach the age of five, they can then decide themselves. Now, since, since I have no immediate recollection and television time is precious, let me ask you a question, Willow. Yes. Do you remember your first uh, costume and what it was? Wait a minute. Is this like what I say it's glue and it sticks to you? Yeah. You have no recollection? I do. Come on. Okay, I was Give an Indian. Up. I was an Indian. There you have it. I was an Indian and a I... Redskin? Washington. Well, that's not an appropriate, yeah. So, I, 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 it was a red outfit. It did have uh, feathers Plenage. sticking up, and I'm sure I bought it somewhere, or my mother did. And I remember we had a party because it was I had my birthday, and we were skipping steps, and I missed the step, and I had a huge scar underneath my eyebrow to show for it ever since. Most people, it's the coffee table scar. So, <laughs> yours is actually a little more interesting. It's an external outdoor. You know, wound of cement on them. We have talked about the Native American uh, costume issue because a lot of music people, they walk right into this sinkhole. They're like, oh, we're shooting a music video. Let's wear an Indian bonnet, uh -huh. American Indian, Native American, and uh -huh. then it just all, all hell breaks loose. Can I say that? Uh, I yes. don't think I've done the Native American thing. I had been... one on last time I was here doing rap. With the native, uh, yeah, but he he is of the people. Yes, that is the difference. Yes, no, but I was saying I, I haven't. I think I don't think I've I've done the how as a costume. You, I I think I've culturally appropriated everybody else's look at some point. I think of myself as everybody's daughter. I hope that's not offensive. Um, first <laughs> costume, first costume I remember. Some is, are delighted by that thought. I was a princess, but not a Disney princess. Let's clarify. I was a medieval principetta with a conical hat yes, because even at a wee wee age I was a nerd into things of the middle ages <laughs> and I remember my mom got me this amazing pimping medallion and it was a silver, she made me this amazing silver dress and I had like a burgundy polyester veil with my conical hat and now I need to go look for those photos but I felt very special. I have, you know, and this is, 
I often just, make the plea to people who have parents, and if you, parents and kids, if you have kids, if you don't have kids, if you watch somebody's kid, if you're an auntie or an uncle of somebody, you cannot discount how important playtime oh is. Oh my god. If your not... kid at home is going through that phase, and they always do at some point, I'm not going to dress up, I'm too old to do that, you make it mandatory. <laughs> You put your foot down, and you take them and say, no, if at the very least you're going to paint your face. Well, this gets back to my favorite topics of Halloween, which is the philosophical and psychological impact of putting on someone else's skin. It's part of having on a costume, but it's also the mental state of that character, whether you're a sexy girl walking down uh, New Wanu Avenue, whether you're a monster thing, or a big bear, or a guy with a, a cleaver in his head, or <laughs> you know, a saint, or a sinner. It's all great exercise in becoming something else. As you yes. well know, as being a theater and dancing certainly, oh, you, be so you can become a lot of different things. We do it kind of casually, yeah. but in many cultures, uh, this is probably the most outstanding example in uh, Western culture, as a hand down from the English, and I do wish we had been covered by the French because they have a much more colorful mass tradition and costuming and parade, but anyway, as English descendants, pri in, by and large, we have this at least one day Halloween where we get to go nuts and put on other people's skins and walk around in public. Don't take that too literally. We do not want any uh, Amityville type of things <laughs> going right. on. Don't but take anyone's understand. actual skin. You know what Please we're doing. do put on something that's not your norm. Paint yourself up. Get a little headdress. Do a little wild thing. Step across the line and give yourself a treat of being something else. What he said, ladies and gentlemen, on that note, we're going to take a small, short break. But don't leave, because we're coming right back. This is The Art of Life. I'm Willow Chang Elion. And this is Jeff Gear rocking the three peak. Aloha. Aloha. I'm Jay Fidel, founder of Think Tech Hawaii. We are a digital media nonprofit that covers things that matter to tech, energy, diversification, globalism, and progress for our state the state of Hawaii. We broadcast on community television and on Oceanic Cable Channel 16. We also stream our shows and interviews live on the internet as both radio and video, and of course we post them here on YouTube. We collaborate with the Hawaii Venture Capital Association to present monthly luncheon programs on subjects of interest to the business community, and we write for the Honolulu Star Advertiser. ThinkTech works hard to raise public awareness in Hawaii. Check out our website, thinktechhawaii.com, and come to our YouTube channel, Think Tech Hawaii. We hope you support our mission and that you like our work. I'm Jay Fidel. Mahalo. Aloha and welcome back to The Art of Life. If you don't know by now, I'll tell you again. I'm Willa Chang Alion. This is Jeff here. We are celebrating All Hallows Eve and all of the revelry and the festivities that go along with it. We are broadcasting here in the heart of Honolulu at Pioneer Plaza. And we are here every Friday from 2 to 3. So if you've got ideas, rants, or raves, hopefully more raves than rants, drop us a line on Facebook or Jen, send Jay Fidel an email. We'd love to hear from you. And click like. Tell your friends about it. We are really here for you, because if you're not watching, well, then it might just be me and my mom. So, and I love my mom, and, you know, I believe the children are our future, but we would love to have an audience. So, getting back to our topic here, we're taking a trip down memory lane. I'm looking at my little notes here. One of the things I think that's so great about Halloween is that it is very much the realm of the senses, right? Of course, we have all the visuals of the costumes and we have all the oh, things yes. that we eat and we have the sounds. So I think that something kind of groovy is if you go to a drugstore, they sell little CDs of spooky sounds and things you can play. And, you know, you might think, who does this? You know what? The houses I remember 
are the ones that would play those tapes. I mean, you knew it was a tape, but right. my goodness, it still gives right. you the willies. Right. It still kind of makes you a little nervous, and you look over your shoulder, and you <laughs> right. hope there's not some feral cat that's going to attack you on now, the way out. Willow, were you the kind of uh, kid who got all the neighbors together, and you put on a haunted house, and decked out the front lawn somewhere, and... You know, I have to admit that in my youth, I was not able to uh, gather the masses as much. I was more of a, an independent contractor. <laughs> However, <laughs> in my seasoned old age, in our house, we have a Halloween tree, and we have a tableau, oh, and that. everybody gets involved with it, everybody in the house, and we have, oh, cool. all, this thing is from my house, we have a whole container. Once you've reached that point where you have a container and you have to figure out where you have to hide it, <laughs> some of that stuff actually never goes away. Some of my Dia de los Muertos items stay in my shrine and my ofrenda. But um, we have many things and come September 30th, I'm busting out the box and oh, unwrapping baby. everything and, and oh, everything man. is set up and we accumulate. We <laughs> never were one of those houses and I think my my lovely mom didn't want to draw that much attention to our house and now we're in a condo and i don't think we have that option so it's very an internal uh, mm. experience mm. but i love houses for our local folk drive through kalihi i'm telling you kalihi pulls out the stops Manoa Valley is pretty fabulous mm -hmm. too. Kaimuki, there are certain neighborhoods where they do seem to have a mild collective effort to put things in their tree, whether it's toilet paper or pumpkins right. in the tree or you know little bones sticking right, out right, of the right. ground. Um, but in addition to the sounds, there are the smells. So I am a fiend for the smell of burning pumpkin when you have the uh, candle inside the pumpkin right. and the top of the lid has that little char and it has a very distinctive You're aroma right. and one thing that makes me sad about your friend the leds is that once you put a flashlight or a tea light in there Doesn't you don't burn. have the smell anymore it's sad people i'm not saying take a risk and burn your house down <laughs> but I mean, this is a soft, live, organic, moist thing. How hard would it be to ignite a pumpkin and burn your house down, really? Pumpkins, uh, I just heard the story uh, where the man was in the house. You can't go in that house. and If you do, then I'll give you a fortune and I'll get, marry you to my daughter. <laughs> so the guy went in the other way. Well, I'm not scared of him anything. And of course he goes in and he's got a little dinner. He's starting to heat it up over the stove and the, right in the middle of the soup, boom, two boots. Then, oh, well, what, you, what you doing? Oh, I'm looking for my head. Can't get my head. Well, I didn't hear sit over here. Maybe, what, would you like to sit down here by the head? <laughs> Reaching on the stew, wishing the stew. Then, she, boom, here come two legs. Oh, my goodness, what are you doing? I'm looking for the for my, for my toes, and I want to go and find my head. Well, come on over here. He puts it in the table. <laughs> and a boom, big body comes down. Oh, my goodness. And boom, two legs and an arms. And they put it all together, but there's no head. Well, he says, well, you got to give something. Game which Cut out the eyes. He said, you can go walking anywhere you want. Try to find your head. Okay. Jack. And that's Jack O'Lantern. A little story about that. She must be the American version because the, the Irish, uh -huh. they used to make them out of turnips. And I think this might be the year that I go and find me a turnip, <laughs> a daikon for our local folks. Hey, Maro. Daikon legs. No, daikon is a turnip. Right. And they would carve right. a jack lantern out of a turnip. I think that'd turnip. be so gorgeous. Pretty amazing stuff. I bet Martha Stewart knows how to do that. Well, once upon a time, I was an elementary school teacher, and fourth grade was my homeroom. And I was driving to work, and I went, oh, man, it's the pumpkin carving day. I've got to have some pumpkins. Pulled into the food land, went to where, of course, there was the bin of big pumpkins. The ugliest, the twisted, the rejects, the ones nobody wanted, but that was the only thing I could get. I the got these weird, twisted, <laughs> odd, you know, cucumber it It was so ugly, and they were horrible, and they were discolored, and I brought them in, I said, you guys, I have got, I, I mean, we're going to rip this contest, and I, like, put them under, I pulled them off, and they're like, they're ugly, and I'm like, oh no, you've got to find the essence inside them, you've got to reveal the real character. These have so much character. They're not, uh, you know, just a regular old pumpkin. These are the real winners. You guys have imagination. Now get those knives out and let's cut some pumpkin. Oh, you my are goodness. teaching them pumpkin wabi sabi. <laughs> the beauty <laughs> in the impermanence and the, the flaws. The of flaws life. make it flavorful. It is the unique qualities that make us weird that give us 
spices. Think about that the Flavors. next time you have a fly in your soup, it's wabi sabi. <laughs> well, yeah. Maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> spices. <laughs> Going back to our nose, there is one other than the pumpkin, distinctive aroma that makes me think pumpkin. And then a little brook that makes me think Halloween. Makeup? We would edit that, but this is live. No, no, not the makeup. Sweat? It's glitter hairspray. Of and I remember horror. when I was a wee young lass of 12 years old, we had our first seventh grade dance. Very of exciting. Course. It was very exciting. Wave me up before you go go. Uh, Fluorescent was the color. Uh, and I remember walking across the field and these cords of little 12 year olds are running up to me and in the dark psh, I could hear it and I thought what are you doing and they were spraying my hair full of glitter hairspray and a drag queen was born and I'm telling you every time I see that Jerome Russell hairspray and they have different colors and whatnot but hey glitter I'm, I'm Liberace's love child he doesn't know it um, <laughs> I smell that and it just takes yeah. me back. I'm 12 all over again. Yeah. It's the beauty of, of scents, you know? Well, Willow, once upon a time, another time when I was a father, I still am, but they were little and they were going around the, the neighborhood and I thought, I want to do something magical. It's Halloween after all, I've got to do something. I found those glow sticks, you break them and they have the two qualities of the, the and they get together and they're like a, you know, neon, yeah, put it in this yeah. road, don't hit it in my car. But I instead put it in my hand and sliced it a little bit and I would go put out your hand and I put this two or three little drops of glowing neon toxic <laughs> liquid in the hands of the children they'd be like and they look at I'd say star magic trick-or-treat happy Halloween I'm so glad you didn't say you blew it out of your nose <laughs> It might have scarred them for that life. Right. <laughs> I went should, there. Yeah, you did. <laughs> but that's it's the season. I know, but it seems so much more Jeff to come out of your nose. <laughs> I thought it was magic, and it really was. The kids were just like totally like, wow, what could that be? You know, do you remember back in the day at McCoy Pavilion, and this is a long time ago, they had an event called the Enchanted Forest. Were you involved yes, in that? Yes, I know a lot about it. They had these two fairies there, and they had some kind of eyeshadow, who knows. But they put it on my hand, and they said it was pixie dust, fairy dust. And I kid you not, I put a band-aid on. <laughs> to keep it there. To keep it there. I didn't, I didn't wash the hand for probably two days. And it left such an impression on me. I mean, the ability to suspend disbelief when you're a child, and just something simple like that, it's so magical, it's so wonderful, it's so wunderbar. That's why we love Halloween, and that's why we're sitting here still. The that's suspension true. of belief, I'm and looking at pretend the oracle here. doing beautiful things. So, Halloween is your birthday, and it does get the, 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 the happy hums. Do you have the same visceral experience that I do? Everyone's different, and I respect that, but right around the end of say August. I know, this is when you can cue the groaning. Oh, this is terrible. Uh, Summer's not even over. Mm. Now they're bringing out Halloween. And then Halloween comes in. Oh, this is terrible. It's not even over. They're bringing out Christmas. I understand that. But for me, the moment I see the first orange, black, and the purple and neon green, which has somehow been added into the lexicon of, of Halloween colors, fashion colors, I think they call it, my heart just skips a beat. <laughs> I mean, I'm having like heart palpitations, and I, I am fighting the urge to like bring out the iPhone and take photos of every Halloween thing. And you know, do you do you get that same sense of glee and joy, or do I need a straight jacket? Well, it used to be that way. And it was sacrilege when, the, when you know, I don't care about turkeys. I don't care about <laughs> hallow, you know, red men and fat bellies. I care about jack-o'-lanterns. I care about <laughs> monsters. I care about witches. That's my stuff. That never goes away. Yeah. But the actual holiday, because I'm a storyteller, yeah. uh, and because it's my birthday, do you get I'm out? so busy. <laughs> I usually, when Halloween comes, I'm like, I don't want to do anything. I just want to sit in Waikiki and watch the throng of bizarros go by <laughs> and just know that there is a place on the earth where everybody <laughs> is as it should be. The nature of real inner selves are marching and I just join in. I don't have to perform. I don't have to like create anything. I just observe this 
menagerie of psychedelic uh, throng passing by. And I, that's probably one of the most fun things for me on Halloween is just to watch the weirdos <laughs> parade around. Present company included. <laughs> included. I, I once paused and saw a young lady. She was cute with this hairpiece collar and it had white doves swimming around her face. That might have been me because I it had It was you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I stopped and said, hi Willow, and you kind of went, oh hi Jam. Yeah, I Jam, was tippy and they were gone again, you know. It's that kind of like just <laughs> so much stuff. And to tell you the truth, I, okay, I'm in, I'm in Hong Kong doing some shows, The Arabian Nights, actually. Yeah, yeah. And I stop on the street vendor, and what I bought became my favorite costume in Waikiki. It's glasses like Harry Potter plastic, and it's got this nose that just like hangs down like it's all misshapen. It looks a lot like other parts of the body that hang out misshapen. And when I move my head, it goes, I go right in people's and this big thing wags around. It sounds like it's not rated G. <laughs> it's, well, it's in the eye of the interpreter, of course. And sometimes I get slapped and sometimes gales of laughter. And it's <laughs> such a quick hit when people are going and they oh, what, whoa, whoa. <laughs> and that's pretty much what I like to do for Halloween. He be cray cray, you heard it here. But I am too, I'm wearing cat's ears and leopard and I am not a monarch programmed kitten to get that out of your head. Sorry, a little Illuminati humor there. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a short break. Don't leave. We've got a few minutes left, and you don't want to miss it. This is The Art of Light, Think Tech Hawaii, Jeff Gear, and Willow Willow Chai Chai. Leon. Woo! Aloha. I'm Nicole Hori for Think Tech. For nearly half a century, the Hawaii Foreign Trade Zone Number 9 has brought the benefits of the Foreign Trade Zone Program to Hawaii businesses and entrepreneurs. DBET, the Department of Business, Economic Development, and Tourism, operates Hawaii's Foreign Trade Zone program to encourage international business and economic development. The Foreign Trade Zone's mission is to increase the amount of international trading activity in Hawaii, thereby providing employment opportunities for the residents of our island state. For more information, see ftz9.org. I'm Nicole Hori. Mahalo. There's all kinds of artists when there's like did someone say this is Think Tech Hawaii? Well, yes, it is. Did someone say this is the art of life? This is the art of life. Which it is. Think Tech Hawaii. Is that Jeff Gear? It is. And that's Willow Chang. Hi. Hi. Welcome back. So we've got a few minutes left on the clock, and we're dishing about our favorite Halloween. So this is something uh, that I think is an interesting phenomenon, and I am certainly not the first person to notice this. This has been ongoing probably a good 15 years or so. What's that? It is the proliferation of sexy. Sexy, sexy as a theme for all costumes. Uh, let's just let's riff on sexy this. witches, sexy, sexy nurses, hotel maids. Um, sexy NSA, no. So yeah, right. Homeland Security, sexy. Yeah. No. No. Homeland like, Security. Uh, uh, sexy teacher, hot for teacher. Maybe. Sometimes. Hardly but you, ever. you've I know you've seen this. There's like sexy fairies and sexy ghosts mm. and, and sexy zombies. Like right. zombies are sexy. Since right. when? Well, since, since never? Since there was a costume to sell. Oh, there uh, we go. So, hmm. someone had written on the Oracle Lunar's Facebook, perhaps you've heard of it, and they were, they were lamenting the sexy time. And this is a true story, I can't yeah. say who it was, but they said, wow, Halloween is just the one day I don't feel like being sexy. Uh, what should cool. I be? And everybody was like piping in because that's what Facebook is. It's the rogues gallery. It's the peanut gallery. And someone wrote in, and I'm not making this up because you can't make this stuff up. They said, and I quote, don't give up on the sexy. Put a spin on it. For example, last year, I was a sexy lobster. <laughs> <laughs> Which made me think, hmm. sexy lobster. <laughs> right. Claws. Red gets red when it's in a hot oh, yeah. pot. And a big, big, antennas. hard, crusty, little, little orc, bee eyes. pointy, point, so point. Sexy. Right, click, clack, click, clack, crack. So, where's my beard? Ooh, ooh. 
pass me the butter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't need any crustaceans or seafood, just in case you're wondering. And after my bout with food poisoning, I'm definitely not touching tuna anytime soon. But that being said, I started thinking about this. I feel like, well, put a spin on it. Could you be a sexy slide rule? It depends who the viewer is, I suppose. <laughs> I, I was thinking, how far can we take this? A sexy whoopee cushion? <laughs> sexy scotch tea? <laughs> I mean, it's like... Flip-flops, oh yeah. <laughs> sexy proctologist? I mean, can anything be sexified? Garden club? <laughs> Garden hoe? Ooh, oh. double meaning. Sexy eggplant? I don't know. Um, I, I, I really would like to see all those things. I can't imagine it. I, Sexy is such a funny thing. You it know? is. Uh, you know, it's almost like a costume in itself. And it's like prefab. I almost feel like that we are so bombarded by supposedly sexy, Kim Kardashian, um, that it's kind of anticlimactic. Oh, it's unless hard you put to find that a... costume on a dog. Then it's suddenly rather amusing. <laughs> I, this will date the show very quickly, but I saw on the internet a picture of a pug. These poor pugs. They're small and runty, and they're just right. subject to the owner of every joke. And it was in a wrecking ball costume with a Barbie on top to look like Miley Cyrus. You might have to Ooh. see it to believe it, but, you know... My children will be munchkins. I, they, they won't be sexy <laughs> right. munchkins, I promise. This uh, year, I'm going to be a tired storyteller. Yeah. The costume? Kind of like this. You know, I gave my mother a card, and it was... She likes funny cards, I must say that. So she, there was no offense intended or, or accepted. Yes. And it was like a top ten list of ten reasons why you know you're too old for Halloween. My mother <laughs> laughed out loud with every single one. And my aunt is Xeroxing it to give to her husband because she went and looked for the same card and it was sold out. That being said, one of those was people tell you, great Keith Richards mask when you're not wearing one. <laughs> <laughs> the other one was something Good like, one. you want to go to every house on the block, but you have to look for the bathroom. <laughs> and the list goes on. Um, but it was, it was fabulous. So if you're not a Halloween person, maybe you don't do crowds. Maybe you don't like candy. I understand. Maybe you don't want to carve the pumpkin that seems sacrilegious to you. You can go to your local drugstore. And go into the Halloween card section because the thing I think that's fascinating about Halloween is it's really like the barometer or you're taking the temperature uh -huh. of pop culture. Uh -huh. What is deemed funny? What's deemed sexy? Right. What are the political jokes? I mean, there, when Lingo was running, I saw many guys dressed as Lingo. Of course. When Obama was running, there's lots of Obamas, there are lots of Sarah Palins, and, and you know, it's very timely. When there were those Chilean miners, I saw groups of <laughs> miners. I mean, that's the thing that's great, is you that's have great. timely things, but when you look at the greeting cards, you can kind of see what is deemed funny or cool or sexy or blue humor and it's never the same from year to year it actually changes and it's a very interesting uh, sociological experiment if you're into those things maybe you can write a dissertation on it just give me a little credit in your footnotes <laughs> right. for the idea um, but I mentioned the sacrilege of ca carving the pumpkin and in my later years I have developed something that is called carvophobia that's my own term you don't want to well, many Cut years, into? several years, there have been a pumpkin shortage in Hawaii. I'm yes, not making is. this up. You know, you wait and your Johnny come lately. Oh, I'll just go get it. Da -da -da, and there's none to get. There's right. none to be had. It's very sad. So when and I think it might have stemmed from that. I had my pumpkin, and Halloween would come and go. And then this little charade plays out in the Chang household. My mother says, "God, oh, gosh <laughs> darn it!" Well, yeah. Willow. When are you going to carve that damn pumpkin? It's almost Thanksgiving. It's flat. And it's beginning I'm, to ooze. I'm like, I'll do it this weekend, Mom. That is Monty Python voice. And I never carve it. And if I'm really lucky, it might get close to Christmas. And then my mother just gets furious. <laughs> it's not in a state of decay because once it's contained and you don't cut into it, it can last. And there was a house on Metcalf oh, wow. Street for almost a year. They had an uncarved pumpkin on their porch. It was fascinating. My mother throws it out before we get to that point. Yeah, right. But I'm trying to understand where did I get the carvophobia? 
Where? Well, um, so does anybody, have you ever experienced carvophobia or pumpkin hoarding, anything like that? You need like to go that? back to your elementary self. <laughs> and when the, it was Halloween day, even if the teacher came in with a twisted, warped pumpkin, you had to carve it because there was a contest that afternoon. This is true. So just pretend that there's like, you know, the ghouls are coming, they expect a certain modicum of a quandary, a certain you won't presence. You will the smell without a carving. That's true. You need or those, the you know, those seeds. seeds in your in your underwear and the, the pulp. everywhere, yeah. you know, kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. We like it. Parades. Parades. I love me a parade. So there's the parade of uh. humanity in Waikiki, but I'm gonna just end on this small small kid kind of memory. The uh, Lions Club, in some neighborhoods it might be the Kiwanis Club, you know, a civic, a small civic group that means well and they devote their time. <laughs> I mean, I should be doing that at this you point are. in my life. At I am. I'm moment. doing the show. <laughs> uh, they would have Halloween parades, uh, and they used to I'll have call. one in Manoa, and all the kids would line up, and they would go from point A to point B, and they, they'd have a judging contest. Mm -hmm. and I love like that. I'm uh, judging. I'm, I'm the MC at Halava Park this evening. It's not the jail. <laughs> it's the park. No, not O Triple C. <laughs> Although they have their own costumes there. They're it's orange. a limited group. They're very limited. They're yeah, very that's orange. That's it's, right. it's fashionable for the season. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. 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 But you can't get out of it. No. Without, uh, anyway. So yeah, I'm going to be, uh, the little kids come up and they have a cool. age groups and they march onto the stage and then they stand there and then I go, look real scary. And they all go, Arr! then I go, act like you're afraid. <gasps> then act like you're going to, you're, you're, you're puzzled. Huh? So here's a question. Store-bought? The or winners are always homemade. uniquely made by some ingenious father and mother that Even love the deck out of little kids. Even if you store bought, I'm I find that acceptable. But if you're just pulling it out of a plastic bag, <sighs> come on. The essence is to be original, to try something different, not a store bought one that's a jillion kind. It's to be six to nine. unique, to yeah. do your own thing, to put at least a sash across it, or paint yourself up in weird colors, or put on a square hat, or take the trash out and stick it in your belly, and then walk around as if you're pregnant. Something, something, put on a different skin, be somebody else. That's what Halloween's about, don't you think, Willow Chang? Even if you put your clothes on backwards. That'd be fun too. And then walk around and bump into the wall. That's really great stuff. It's Halloween. That's what stuff's oh. about. Oh, please Have do it. Have we convinced you yet, people? <laughs> Have we convinced you yet? <sighs> I He's feel better. He's wearing skulls on his Aloha shirt. Oh, yeah. I'm wearing glitter ears from almost 20 years ago. Come on. <laughs> It'll give you a memory, it'll give you a tickle, it'll make your life a little bit sicker. That's the thing we like. Get out of your own skin and put on something else for Halloween. But seriously, friends, on a serious note, our life, we take it for granted. We all do it. But it's for a short time. Life is for a short time. And you know what? You might as well cut loose and live a little and have a little fun. You are never too old for Halloween, and Halloween has changed throughout the time. It's not only a kitty thing, and it's not just a sexy witch thing. People used to bob for apples. They used to do of uh, fortune telling, and they used to try to guess yes. who their husband would be, and all of these other things, and you can honor the, the, the spirit world. So, and that has nothing to do in conflict with your faith. You can be a Jehovah's Witness or Buddha, and you, Buddhist, and you can still enjoy Halloween. I mean, from our open-minded thinking. Sure. Sure. So, on that wonderful note, I'm sad that we've got to go, but, uh... I guess that's the point. We all go sometime. We all go sometime. And before we do, try something else out. <laughs> Put on some fun hair. You ever know what I mean? <laughs> Homies, you can get a wig for as little as ten bucks at the drugstore. I'm serious. I'm not going to mention names or brands, but, you know, you live, live a little. You owe it to yourself. Go ahead. And Go ahead. Lift it up a little. This is the art of life. This is Jeff Gear. I'm Willow Chang Elion. We're going to be back next week on Friday from 2 to 3. And we're going to have a special guest uh, telling us about a wonderful event coming up next weekend. So next weekend, I want you to tune in. You're going to get the backstory on two great events happening here in Honolulu. We are broadcasting live.
from Pioneer Plaza in the heart of Honolulu. Like us on Facebook, please. And we've got programming all throughout the week as well as on the weekend on OC16. There is no excuse to be out of the loop with what's going on in our fabulous dynamic Honolulu and Hawaii. So on that note, I bid you fond of you. I wish you happy haunting, safe trick-or-treating, all that good stuff, and we will see you next Friday. Hello.